At the time, me and Tim, we basically were in a creative space thinking about Michael Jackson a lot. We knew we eventually wanted to get on Mike's album, so we were doing a lot of ideas that were out of the box from the normal things people had heard us do. So that was creatively this new sound we were trying to forge before we were even in touch with Cisco. At the time, Tim was sampling a lot of West Montgomery, which is where the original sample from Thong Song came from. Ta-da, West Montgomery. It was his version of Eleanor Rigby, obviously from the Beatles. I started off with just this. That's all I heard, just that part, and I just kept looping it. Next thing I know, he, he's adding a kick in. Do, do. And then he starts adding the, you know, the percussions in, the hi-hats. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, this is gonna be sick, wait a minute. And I could hear it just resonating through the walls. I'm like, are you serious? That's going to be sick. So then I go upstairs. We both just sitting there listening to it going crazy. Like, it didn't need anything else. So I just did that. Just real simple. Before you know it, I had to beat. It just sounded very urgent. You knew that it was a game changer. But again, we're thinking Michael Jackson. At the time, we wasn't thinking Cisco. Burnt it to a CD and a dad. I left it alone. I went to the next song. Three, four months later, Kenneth called us. Was like, Cisco want to meet with y'all, man. His album's done. He just want to see what y'all got. We have made a compilation of songs for Cisco. A lot of them were ballads, more in the R&B vein of Drew Hill. It probably is about 20 tracks on there. And the, that track that had the Eleanor Rigby sample in it, it literally was accidentally put with the bundle of songs that we sent them. When we met with Cisco, I rewound the dat. As soon as I pressed play, I realized this is that track. It was the first one on the dat, and I did it for Mike. Oh, my, I was the only one when it came in. Cisco was like, yo, man, what is that? It was just this beat that had like a Eleanor Rigby sample on it. So then I heard him when I, ah, oh, man, you know what? That was nothing. I was, I was just nothing. Click, and I went to the next one. So we got the music loud, and he's like, he's over there. <laughs> Go back to the first one, man. And I'm just grooving, like, yo, this is, this is ill. Like, this is the magic. Like, something about this is, like, dope. A song like that could be what you need to finish the album. I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I knew we were coming out here, so I did a batch of tracks for, for Mike. This was one of them. Oh, man, come on, man, come on, man. I was like, I'm being honest. That's, that's what I did. And he was like, all right, man, well, you know what? Just send me those ones that you showed me. I, I still like them. I love those. I was like, OK, cool. He gets on the plane, go back to Baltimore. My cell phone rings. It's Cisco. Cisco's on the airplane now, right? He's like, yo, man, Tim, I got to have that, man. How much, you, how much money you want, man? I'm serious, man. Like, if you say I can have that, when I land, I'm going to jump on another plane and come back. And then I'm like, really? If an artist like a song or a track that much, we got to give it to him, man, even though we had it for somebody else. And he already heard it on top of that. I messed up and played it, but I'm like, all right, Cisco, man, you got it. Next day, we in the studio. When Cisco came back to LA to record it, that's when the track was ready, but there's no song, there's no lyrics. So Cisco's writing, trying to figure it out. So I heard the melody first, but the words didn't really click. So I had a date that night. We get back to the crib. So we making out, and I'm rounding second base. She decides she wants to get up and strip. It's the first time I had ever seen a thong. And it was glorious. <laughs> I'm like literally writing the song, talking about the date that I was on. The dress was so scandalous, you know another guy could handle it. This is like real life. The next day, my friends come over. I tell them, gather around them. This girl had on a, a thong. And they was like, a what now? Needless to say, all my boys was like, literally like on a pilgrimage, like, you know, Lord of the Rings or whatever, to go find the thong, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is really what happened, I shit you not. And so when I get to the chorus, I, I didn't know what I should say. My friend comes in and he like, yo, stop the music, boom. Yo, I was with this girl last night and guess what she gave me? I was like, what, what did she give you? And he was like, that thong, 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 just like that. I was like, yo, what if right there I was like, what if I said that thong, 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 thong? They was like, ha, ha, that's funny, yeah, you would never do it. I was like, 
I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna say that, dude. And by the time I got to that part, everybody in the room said it with me, like, da 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 da. I was like, look, it works. We got it, yo, it's a hit. That's a smash, that's it. It's funny, because Tim calls me, and I hear the music going in the back, and he's like, hey, Bob, man, guess what the name of the song is? And I said, what? He said, thong song. I said, thong song? Really? <laughs> I was like, how can I show my mom I'm talking about some thongs, man. We definitely had some reservations in the beginning. So me and Tim, we've always been 100 percenters, meaning we did all the music, and we also wrote all the lyrics, did all the vocal arrangements, everything. Here comes Cisco. He's like, all right, this, I got this, I got this. I want to do this like this. And we were like, whoa, whoa. The Eleanor Rigby sample was a hurdle for me. Eleanor Rigby is Eleanor Rigby. This song needs its own music. I was like, yo, I'm gonna rewrite the string line. So I hired some people that played on Star Wars to play the string line. My name is Bruce Dukov. I'm a violinist in the studios in California, and I've done, to this date, over 1,800 feature motion pictures, not to mention television films and other things, and I'm the violinist on the thong song. I got the call from Def Jam Records to do this session for Cisco. Of course, I didn't know who Cisco was. I went to that studio. Cisco was there. I can't remember what color his hair was, but it was different. <laughs> so they played me a track, and it was very Eleanor Rigby-like. And then he was humming a part that he wanted me to play as an obligato, and I thought, is this something like this kind of sound you want to have a... Uh... And he said, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Then I said, well, what do you want to have as a punch for it? He was going, yeah, like a dun, 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 dun. So I said, what about... And that's all going underneath. You know? So this is basically what you hear. I heard it, I'm not gonna lie, man. I was like, they don't even sound like my track now, man. The, the drums and all that do, man. But at the same time, I'm not scared of change. I'm like, okay, if y'all want it, okay, cool. Cisco came up with a, an idea for a key change to modulate a half step up halfway through the song. It creates a powerful dynamic in the song when there's a modulation because it's like something is the same, but something is different. Well, it's different because the key of the song has risen. I did everything I could to that part to make that climax just really really feel epic. It was almost sexual in nature. Oh, yes! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> so I'm listening to the hook, and I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm still trying to work with his sand thong. Yeah. It's hot, though. I can't, I can't even front of it. In my mind, I'm like, it's dope. Baby, I, I got to give it up to him, and it worked. It worked incredibly. So after we turned in the final mixes to Def Jam, that's when we find out that they had went with Gotta Get It as Cisco's first single. It was interesting because at the same time, all the DJs were like, Thong Song is the one. That's the one you need to go with. And then I, I want to say by like the third week into working his first single, they pulled the plug. They was like, we got to go directly to Thong Song. That's the thing that forced it to become the single were the DJs. Everybody just started playing it. And once you got the pop radio playing it, you know, radio's everything. Once they heard it, it was like automatic. Like, we did not have to ask anybody to do anything. The song became so huge that you couldn't get away from it. I just remember that some friends of mine heard a song like that, and they said, did you hear that song, Thong Song? It's got this great violin thing going on it. And I said, no, I haven't heard it. And it dawned on me, maybe that's the song that I did. Thong Song took over the world. Thong Song took over radio. Thong Song took over the album. You forgot about the first single. It was all about the Thong Song, and it was all about that video. This thing right here. We couldn't show thongs at that time in the video. I said, what if we show the thongs upside down? So technically, you're not looking at a thong, but you are. They made it as racy as they could back in 99. You got dumps like a truck? What, are you kidding me? Wait, let's be clear. When I said dumps like a truck, I did not mean anything about poop. Like, you know, when a dump truck backs up, like, beep, beep, beep. That's what I was thinking. Like, you know, she was backing that ass up. 
and like a dump truck. I kind of had like my own idea of what the video should be. I saw this thing on Bugs Bunny. Elmer Fudd was chasing Bugs Bunny and it was like literally running on top of people's heads. I was like, yo, I have to do that. Let me see that. They even got this meme, Jesus walked on water, but Cisco walked on bitches. <laughs> That's blasphemous and true. <laughs> So the thong song is going crazy. It's like killing the airwaves. And then, you know, we get that call from our lawyer, like, have a seat. If you're standing up, you might want to take a seat. You know, that's when all the drama started. I get a call from Def Jam. And they're like, hey, uh, we got a problem here. What's the problem? Well, there's a potential lawsuit from Ricky Martin because we stole the interpolation of because you live in La Vida Loca. When he said that, I went back and I remember. I'm like, Cisco, man. Living, we gotta clear that. Cisco had assured us, like, oh, I got a relationship with Desmond Child, who wrote Living La Vida Loca for Ricky Martin. We good, that's a phone call. Here we go, lawsuit. And then the negotiations started. You know, we went back and forth for how much they thought they should get for the song. And all of a sudden, like, you start seeing your publishing checks going. <laughs> Desmond Child has more ownership of the song than anyone. I'll just put it like that. And I'm sure Cisco didn't purposely say, you know what, no, I'm not going to clear that. But somewhere along the line, there was definitely an oversight. As a manager, nobody came to me and said, can you get this clear? And then nobody at Def Jam, because you got to have your music go through all the licensing department. So I guess nobody noticed it. I really couldn't tell you who's at fault. We just got to take the L on this one. Like, we just got to, we got to pay them for that. So we paid them, so everybody ate. Everybody that had something to do with it got their piece of the thong. <laughs> the legacy of the thong song is introducing the world to thongs, yo. That song was more than just the thong. The fact that my hair was silver and I had on this like leather clothes and the dragon and I'm flying around in my videos. And then you got like artists today who dye their hair every color of the rainbow and just expressing themselves in different ways. You can't explain when songs go that big like that. That put us in a different bubble of producers. After Thong Song came out, like in the midst of all the craziness, John McClain calls us and he said, I'm calling you under the instructions of Michael Jackson. He wanted me to call you guys and to tell you, and I quote, if you can give me something hotter than Thong Song, meet me at this address. And it was the address to his recording studio coming full circle to end up that we actually get the call from Michael Jackson because he loved the thong song. And it was like, it was amazing. That's the beauty of when you're on a path. You don't know where you're going to end up. And that's where all the, the good stuff is. It's in the journey. Man, there's so many gems in this video. So many. So many. I'm going to just get right to it. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from GroupEddy2Music.com, and right here we got everybody that was involved with Cisco Stone Song talking about everything involved with Cisco Stone Song. I was in high school when this song came out. Um, it was totally different. No, we didn't know what thongs were. I thought it was just because we were young, but girls really weren't wearing thongs like that. Panty lines were abundant everywhere. You know, we all loved Drew Hill. We all were waiting to see what Cisco was going to do. And he had some other stuff that came out, but the thong song was somewhere you heard on the radio, you heard on TV, you heard uh, in the club. I mean, you heard it everywhere. The song was massive, and it was a very, very uh, racy song, obviously, but it was something that slapped. And when you listen to Cisco talk and the producers talk, there was a lot of creativity that went into it. There was a lot of risk taking that went into it. There was a lot of uninhibited music making that went into it. When you're making your songs, you gotta be like that. You gotta take risk. You gotta not care. You gotta think something sounds stupid. I remember like Dave Chappelle saying that in one of his stand-ups. We can find a clip, put it up. Hey, I've seen a thong contest. Scandalous. Yeah, it's some scandalous shit, all right. I couldn't get over that, man. Because a DJ, you know, I was dancing with a girl, and the DJ said, everybody that wants to be in the thong contest, please report to the DJ booth. The girl's like, excuse me. <laughs> and they put on that song, so let me see some thong, 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 thong. Them girls was going off. Thong, 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 thong. Um, but, like, you got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with looking stupid. 
you know and a lot of people don't a lot of y'all are trying to be tough or trying to be cool all the time it doesn't work like that you know and because cisco was that creative he was talking about the music video and bugs bunny and elmer fudd his mindset was somewhere totally different which made that song as popular as successful and as legendary as it is because it was popular successful legendary everybody's gonna come for their money and cisco was signed to a label at the time he had a manager he was with Def Jam. They have a licensing department. There are people whose full-time jobs are to clear samples and interpolations on major records, on all the records, actually. And the fact that nobody cleared Living La Vida Loca is a testament to how full of shit record labels are. Cisco's the artist. The producers are the producers. The manager is the manager. When they give you a final product as a label, you had nothing to do with that creatively. Your job is to market it and protect it. And they market the fuck out of Thong Song. I'll give them that. But they did not protect it. And the label took a cut of Thong Song. The label still gets paid off of Thong Song. Pretty sure the label owns the masters of Thong Song. So because of that, why would you sign to a label if you know they're not going to do shit? Why would you sign to a label if you know they're not going to look out for you? Why would you sign for a label if they're not going to protect you? Because Desmond Child, who made Ricky Martin's Living La Vida Loca, had one interpolation inside of the Thong song, and he has the most percentage of the record. This is not the first time that this has happened. It happens all the time. This is why you gotta protect your stuff. This is why you gotta know who is in charge of what and force them to do their job. Now, a lot of y'all overthink this shit, overthink protection and copyrights and all that. You're an independent artist. Nobody knows who the fuck you are. Ain't nobody trying to sue you. Desmond Child sued Cisco and the entire Thong Song team because the song was popular as fuck and making millions of dollars. Ain't nobody gonna sue you for your song that's made three dollars in three years on Spotify. No one gives a fuck. So make the music you wanna make. But once you get to a certain point, you do gotta protect your stuff and you gotta do the due diligence. This is why I say record labels are full of shit. They take so much money from you, then the one thing I need you to do, protect me from being sued for publishing and shit, and you can't even do that. So now every time this song comes on, somebody that wasn't in a studio session, that wasn't recording on the mic, that wasn't on the boards, that wasn't at the music video, that didn't write the treatment, that didn't tour off of it, that didn't go through everything we had to do to make my career and make this song successful, is getting the lion's share of the revenue, all because of y'all fucked up mistake. Watch this entire clip on Vice again, go through it, dissected so much shit here this shit was made for michael jackson the shit was made for michael jackson but they gave it to somebody who was really passionate about it and it all came full circle and michael jackson ended up working with them anyway outstanding clip outstanding job by vice outstanding song by cisco all the producers i appreciate y'all if you need help with your music you need help getting on playlists Need help getting your shit out there and making sure it's protected? You on Instagram, click the link up top. You on YouTube, click the link in the box. Not the pond. Y'all stay true. Killing like a Michael Porter. Getting buckets a quarter. Killing pockets a owner. Betty's coming at the donuts. Killing like a Michael Porter. Group82music.com. Killing like a Michael Porter.